Okay, so um, welcome back. Uh, my name is Ricardo Montoya. I am your teacher for uh, the fifth, the sixth semester. Um, I don't know yet, uh, but okay. This is the this is the course that we are doing for the University of Guanajuato. And um, on the last episode, we were speaking about the time tenses. We finally started speaking about time tenses. We were speaking about the simple present and the simple past. Both of these time tenses are probably the two most difficult ones. I explained you why. I explained you that in the affirmative statements, they normally don't use the auxiliary. When you don't have the auxiliary in the simple present, uh, if it is the third person of the singular and the auxiliary should be thus, then the verb has to take the S. In the simple past, the auxiliary has to be did, but in affirmative statements, you never have the auxiliary and then you have to change the verb to past. And the past conjugation of verbs, um, well, it has a lot of irregular verbs, so you need to just memorize those. Then we were checking also that um, in negative statements and questions, you never have to use the auxiliary. Uh, sorry, the auxiliary is mandatory. You never uh, is never optional. You need to use the auxiliary. And when you have the auxiliary, you don't have to change the verb. That's pretty much the point. We were also checking how uh, the simple present and the simple past are difficult because the verb to be is like a different verb. You never use the auxiliary did, do, or does with the verb to be. The verb to be in the present has three conjugations, are, am, um, or is. And in the past, it has two more conjugations, was or were, depending on the person. If you have any more questions about that, you should go back and check those videos. I think there is like a 45 uh, minutes video on the simple present like and like a jury, like half an hour um, minutes video on the simple past. And those are things that you have checked before. They are not new. They are some things that you have been checking things uh, probably before the university started. So uh, right now we're gonna move on uh, to the simple future. The simple future is not really the most difficult one. And you're going to start checking or noticing how the rest of time tenses, they are very simple. They don't really have as many, as many problems or as many exceptions as the simple past and the simple present. We're gonna start with the simple future. Uh, so let me just check this part. Time tenses, uh, simple future. This is what we were speaking about, what we are speaking about. So the simple future is used to talk about actions that haven't happened yet, okay? Very simple, things that haven't happened yet, they will happen in the future. We can use it to make predictions or to make promises. So again, it is to speak about events that are yet to happen. Um, the, simple, the simple future utilizes utilizes the auxiliary will. This is the auxiliary, will, this is important, which means both future and certainty. When you say will, if you say something like, remember auxiliary, sorry, subject, auxiliary, verb, and complement. In this case, in the simple present, sorry, the simple future, this is the simple future. We are speaking about the simple future. In the simple future, the auxiliary is always, always, always necessary. You never leave it out. So you say, I, you say, will, uh, your verb, it will be run. Let me just think. And your complement is, I don't know, in the park. I will run in the park. This auxiliary, this is the auxiliary and it means future. This is the verb. This auxiliary means both future and certainty. So when you, when you say, I will run, you're saying in the future, yes. And also it is like a promise that you're making. You're saying, I will run. You are a f you're, you're making an affirmation. You're making an affirmative statement. You are like promising that this will happen. You're making a commitment. I will run in the park, okay? People expect you to do that because you, can, you have promised it in a way. Also, there are other two auxiliaries that we can use. We can use, again, we can use the auxiliary will is one, but also we can use the auxiliary may or might. These are modal verbs or we're gonna speak about modal verbs, but these uh, modal verbs, they can be in, uh, used instead of will. 
You can use will, may or might. But the problem is when you use may or might, you imply future, but you don't imply certainty. When you say I will run in the park, you are making like a promise. You are like saying, uh, I promise this will happen, okay? If instead of using will, you don't use will. If you use the auxiliary may or might, I may run, this means in the future. But it doesn't make a promise. It's something like I probably, I will probably run. When you say I may run, it means tomorrow, but it's not a promise. It, you're not making a promise. I may run, don't express, uh, they don't express certainty, okay? So I will run will be something like voy a correr o correré. Es como una promesa, es algo que va a pasar en el futuro y además hay certeza. Si dices I may run or I might run, significa yo tal vez corra. Hay futuro, pero no hay promesa. ¿sí? After will, may or might, we always use verbs in the base form. This is probably the most important part in this. Uh, cuando estamos usando may, might, bueno, may, might, or will, cualquiera de estos tres, nuestro verbo siempre, 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 siempre va a ir en la forma base, ¿ok? Eso quiere decir que no importa cuál sea el sujeto, no se conjuga. No importa si el sujeto en lugar de I, no importa si el sujeto fuera he may run, she may run, you may run, he will run, we will run, and that's it. You don't really have to change. But we, we're going to focus on will. I think will is the most common one, so we're going to be checking how it works. Okay? So it says, uh, time tenses. Again, uh, it is important for you to remember that the auxiliary in this case is mandatory. It is necessary. It is not optional. It's an obligation. Okay? necessary. You never not use the auxiliary. When you have uh, affirmative or negative statements, it is mandatory. When you have questions, it is mandatory. So how do you make an affirmative statement? The only thing that you need to do is you need to use your verb. Sorry, sorry, uh, not your verb. You have your subject, your auxiliary, your verb, and your complement. Remember, very simple, whenever you have, sorry, whenever you have the auxiliary will, the verb is always in the base form. The verb is in the base form. What does it mean, base form? It means that you don't conjugate it. It's not I will am. You never say am. Am will be the conjugation for the first person of the verb to be, but only in the simple present. When you're using will, you always use the base form. I will be, you will be, she will be, they will be, we will be. It is always will and be in the base form. Remember, the verb to be is a normal verb. In the simple present and in the simple past, the verb to be is like a little different. It never uses the auxiliary. In the, in the future, the auxiliary is always be, uh, will, and the verb to be is another verb. I will be, I will run, I will go, I will try, I will eat. It is always in the base form. It's just another simple normal verb. You don't really have to do anything special with it. Okay? So, what happens when you want to make a negative statement? Your auxiliary takes the negative. You can say will not, or you can say would. Remember that will not. Uh, well, want is a contraction or will not. And the verb again, always in the base form. Yeah? The, the verb is always, always, always in the base form. You have your subject, your auxiliary, and your verb. What happens when you want to make a question? When you want to make a question, the subject and the auxiliary, they change positions. You don't start subject auxiliary, you start auxiliary and then subject. You change, it's not green, red, it's red, green, okay? Not subject, not, not subject auxiliary, but these two change, they change positions, 
and then you say first auxiliary and then uh, subject. Auxiliary, subject, the verb is always, always, always in the base form. Sorry. The verb is always in the base form. The verb is always in the base form. So this is always the same structure, okay? For affirmative statements, this is something that we know. You remember it. In the simple present, subject, auxiliary, plus verb, plus, sorry, plus verb, plus complement. The verb in this case is in the base form. Negative, subject, auxiliary taking the negative. Sorry, I need to improve my handwriting with this. Auxiliary with negative, verb in the base form, and complement. If you wanna make a question, you don't say subject auxiliary, you say auxiliary first, subject next, verb and complement. If you wanna make an information question, it is the same, auxiliary, subject, verb, and complement, but you start with something called a question word. When you're using why, the, the response is going to be because you're, when you're asking why, you're asking for uh, the reason, okay? Remember, when you have will, it is an affirmative statement and it implies certainty and future. I will be late in the future and for sure. I, I promise I will be late. I won't be late. Negative, uncertainty, and future. I will not be late, I promise. You can count on me not being late. Will you be late? This is a yes, no question. I mean, I am asking you if you will or won't be late. Yes, I will be late. No, I won't be late. If you're asking why, you're asking for the reason. This is an information question. Why will you be late? I will be late because something happened, whatever, then you give your reason, okay? This is pretty much it. The auxiliary is always mandatory. The verb is always in the base form, base form. And the verb to be, is a normal simple verb like any other. You don't have any uh, any type of restrictions or anything like that. I mean, the, the verb to be, there, there is no, do you remember how in the simple present and in the simple past you have exceptions for the verb to be and whatever? In the simple future, the verb to be is just a normal regular verb like any other, okay? How do you use the future using may or might? Well. It is exactly the same. You don't really have to do anything much different. You have your subject. Uh, let me just move this a little bit here. Okay. Uh, you have subject. Uh, let me change to this. You have your subject, your subject, your subject, and your subject. Then you have your auxiliary. The auxiliary, uh, well, you can use will. And negative, you can use want. You can use uh, will. You can use will. Okay? Remember, when your auxiliary is will, the verb is always, always, always in the base form. Be, be, be and B. So, and then finally you have your complement. Complement, 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 and complement. So, we have the same structure. Affirmative statements, then we have subject, auxiliary, verb in the base form, and complement. So what happens? I can use, instead of will, if you don't wanna use will, you can write something different and you can say, I may, I may be late. When you say I may be late, you're implying future, but you are not implying certainty. You are not making any promises, okay? If you want to, use will, you want to use will, 
but you don't want to make any promise, then you can use an adverb. When you are, for example, remember that you have subject, auxiliary, verb, and complement. Subject, auxiliary, verb, and complement. Auxiliary, subject, verb, and complement. And when you have an extra word, a word that is not a part of the, if you have a word that is not a part of the structure, remember that word is probably an adverb. If you don't remember what an adverb is, uh, check it on the chapter that we were uh, speaking about ad adverbs. An adverb is pretty much uh, a description of the verb. You're saying that you will be late, but you, will, you are saying, I will be late. I will probably be late. Is probable, is not certainly be late. Okay? Entonces, bueno, ¿qué pasó aquí? Tenemos otra vez, muy sencillo, sujeto, auxiliar, verbo y complemento, sujeto, auxiliar, verbo y complemento. Entonces, cuando quiero hacer una oración afirmativa, I will be late. I won't be late. Negativo. Pregunta, will you be late? Si ustedes quieren decir que van a hablar de futuro, pero no quieren prometer nada, no quieren hablar de certeza, tienen dos opciones. O usan el modal may o might, I may be late or I might be late. Es lo mismo que decir, I will probably be late. En este caso, si están usando will, perdón, si están usando will, quiere decir uh, que se están refiriendo a ustedes a que están haciendo una promesa, 100%. Pero si ustedes le ponen un adverbio, este adverbio remueve esto. Ah, bueno, no estoy diciendo que voy a llegar tarde. Estoy diciendo que yo tal vez llegue tarde. No estoy ya prometiendo nada. En lugar de usar may o might, podemos usar un adverbio. Acuérdense que los adverbios son palabras que no tienen un lugar fijo en la oración. Entonces, este adverbio puede ir al final. I will be late probably. No, bueno, suena medio raro, creo que no. Pero podría estar, por ejemplo, este adverbio podría estar acá. I probably will be late. O podría estar al mero principio. Probably, I will be late. ¿Sí? I will, I will be probably late. También es posible. Acuérdense que los adverbios no tienen un lugar específico. Este adverbio está aquí, pero podría estar acá. Podría estar al mero principio. Podría estar acá. Al final casi no. Creo que suena medio raro. Pero el problema de los adverbios es que no tienen un lugar fijo. Pero no se preocupen. Si ustedes encuentran al sujeto, al auxiliar al verbo y al complemento, cualquier cosa extra no es nada más que un adverbio. Si no saben qué significa, ignórenlo, porque solo es una descripción del verbo. Les está diciendo algo sobre el verbo. Si lo ignoran, ya tienen, I will be late. Y no hay ninguna, ninguna uh, necesidad de hacer ningún cambio. ¿Estamos bien? Así sería más o menos como, fun como funciona el futuro simple. Recuerden, Uh, déjenme nada más checar si eso es todo. Ok. El que sigue es el presente continuo, progresivo. Ese lo vamos a dejar para la siguiente sesión. Pero bueno, la cosa sencilla aquí es, el futuro simple ya es bastante diferente de el presente y el pasado simple. En el presente simple, el auxiliar es do or dos. No usan el auxiliar en oraciones afirmativas. En pasado simple, el auxiliar es did, no se usa el auxiliar en oraciones afirmativas. Cuando no hay auxiliar en el presente simple o en el pasado simple, el verbo tiene que cambiar. Además, el verbo to be es un verbo que funciona diferente. En el futuro simple es bastante más sencillo porque nuestro auxiliar es will. No importa cuál sea la persona, siempre es will. Nunca es wills, no es nada parecido. Es, 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 la S, acuérdense, no es he wills. Porque la S es una cosa del presente. Esto es el pasado, perdón, esto es el futuro. Este es otro tema. Aquí no necesitamos la S. He will, el verbo siempre va en forma base. He will be. Además, en este caso, por ejemplo, el verbo to be es un verbo como cualquier otro. I will be, I will go, I will cook, I will sleep, I will dream, I will watch, I will try. Cualquier verbo que ustedes pongan ahí en forma base no es nada más que... Uh, pues eso, la acción que va a pasar. Incluso el verbo to be es, el, es, el, es un verbo común y corriente. No hay que hacer nada especial con él. ¿sí? Nada más las reglas son que uh, el, verbo, el, el auxiliar will no cambia, que el verbo va en forma base y que cuando dices will, estás prometiendo, estás expresando certeza. Si no quieres expresar certeza, si quieres decir futuro, pero no quieres expresar certeza, no quieres hacer una promesa, entonces tienes de dos. 
Una es usar un adverbio como probably o maybe. I will probably be late. I will maybe be late. Ok, podría ser. O de plano, no usar will, sino usar may o might. Cualquiera de esos dos también funcionan para futuro, pero no prometen nada. Ok, eso sería todo por ahorita. Este es el futuro simple. Vamos a seguir checando ahora con los tiempos continuos, los tiempos perfectos y los tiempos perfectos continuos. Recuerden que hay 12 tiempos. Este es el tercero que checamos. Vamos a checarlos todos. Si tienen dudas con alguno de los otros, bueno, empezamos por el presente simple, luego el pasado simple. Esta es la tercera parte, el futuro simple. Vamos a seguir con los continuos, con los perfectos y con los perfectos continuos. Entonces, eso es para que lleven más o menos una idea de cómo, de cómo está el orden. Espero que todo tenga ya, esté debidamente etiquetado para cuando esté en la plataforma, esté arriba en, en, eh, en YouTube, supongo que lo voy a subir. Y bueno, cualquier cosa, recuerden, este, tienen dudas o alguna cosa parecida, hagan sus este, anotaciones. Uh, if you have any doubts, again, You can just like uh, write them down in a, on a piece of paper on your notebook or whatever. And then we will have some face-to-face uh, -face or meetings on Zoom or something. And then we can check any spe spe specific example that you have your doubts about or something. And I will be more than happy uh, to go through that. Okay. So thank you very much. Uh, have a good day, afternoon, night. Okay. If you want to continue checking things, go to the next chapter. If you want to rest for today, I think that's fair too. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you very much again. My name is Ricardo Montoya, and I will see you. I will see you soon.